Yo, sub geeks, welcome back to the channel. I surely love to repaint all type of fashion dolls, but this is something I think every doll artist has questioned to themselves at least once. What if I could make and design my own dolls? This little cutie you see here, I made it. Yes, in fact, this is the very first doll I create completely from scratch, and I'm really, really proud of it. The doll stands 18 cm tall and uses 20 mm eyes, and I think approximately 8 inch widths. It has 5 points of articulation, but it can strike a pose. It uses magnets for the head cap, which I added using a epoxy scope, and I engraved my logo for you to remember to subscribe to the channel. This doll is available for free download on my Thingiverse page. The link is down below on the description box. If you want to download it and customize it yourself, be free to do it. This is a very quick time lapse of part of the sculpting process. I sculpt the doll using Blender because, you know, we like free stuff. That said, I think my channel is not the best place for Blender tutorials, nor I feel qualified enough to make them. I print the doll using my Elegoo Mars 2 using a blend of white and beige Elegoo water washable resin. So that said, let's move on to the face up and we'll keep talking there. I need to say I didn't record any part of the printing process because first, I was just learning and second, my studio is part of my bedroom and I really don't appreciate uh, the smell of the 3D printing resting all over my room for hours cause it's kind of strong chemical smell. So I 3D printed another room and it's kind of a pain in the, you know, right there to move all the camera and lighting equipment over there. So, you know, I'm really sorry about that and maybe next time. This is the very first time I'm drawing on a resin surface and I have to admit it, I felt so intimidated because I have read and heard here and there that resin surfaces do not handle the watercolor pencils the same way as vinyl does, but honestly, I don't know what's the fuss about it. At least this time they work really well for me, so this repaint kinda flow easily as you'll see. I'm going for this 100% accurate anime style. I researched a lot and I was looking for pictures of BJD's anime dolls all over the internet and I was really speechless how beautiful and simple they are. It was really really inspiring to do so, so for this repaint I'm gonna go for that. Anime repaints tend to be really minimalist, but as usual minimalist doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be easier. Especially because line work needs to be really really clean and sharp, very graphic and you know the symmetry. So at this point I thought the repaint was completely done but nope, I have to embrace it, I hate the eyebrows. I was trying to convince myself but I think the best I can do is to erase them with acetone and repaint them again. This time using my usual style. In my defense, I think they look way better now. I'm really glad I decided to fix them. I really love all chibi art and of course, I love Nendoroid figures so that was my biggest inspiration for this doll. I wanted it to look like a bigger Nendo, just in resin BJD form. And I think somehow I nailed it. I'm just gonna spread some macro powder. And now the repaint is done. But of course, we need to make the inside eyes. You know, of course, you can buy them already made. This doll, as I said, can use 20mm eyes, but you know, since this is a repaint video, I wanted to make them myself. I want them to be really magical and cute, so I just took my acrylic paints and completely improvised them. This part was really, really fun. And now, thanks to the magic of the edition, here they are. I really, really love all of them, so choosing the pair I'll be using, it's gonna be kind of difficult. These custom resin eyes I made for this doll are also available on the Singiver files. 
So this part of the process is really really easy, you just put the irises on the resin eye and then you just cover it using UV resin. After that you just cure them using the UV resin lamp, like for 3 minutes. So I was really enjoying the process and maybe I made too many eyes, so let's see her rocking some of them. I think they're all adorable. Honestly, my gut say that since she will be a blondie, I should go with the pink ones. And talking about blondie, it's time for the hair. For the wig, I will be using this pre-made nylon hair weft I got online. They are really really cheap and they look so good. I also made a traditional and basic doll wig cap using stretch fabric and Elmer's glue. Before applying the weft, I made them straight using my flat iron because this type of hair can handle high temperatures just like human hair does. I have seen a lot of BJD's doll customizers, especially Korean doll customizers using this technique and this type of hair, and I really think this was the perfect opportunity to try it myself. I think this is a really good option if you're gonna make longer wigs because these hairs come in such striking colors and as you can see once you get the trick it's really easy to you know to make wigs using it. I love yarn hair but I think its possibilities are really really limited because no matter how hard you try you never get really full long wigs using yarn. I also forget to mention that this time I'm making a girl, but actually I created this doll gender neutral so it can be a boy, it can be a girl or whatever character you want it to be. There is this misconception that chibis are kids, and while some chibis are kids, in fact chibi art in general is just an art style, so any character or person regardless their age can be represented in chibi art style. You know, giant head, huge eyes and tiny body. So ding dong, the wig is done and oh my god, she looks so cute on her, it's like, oh my god, just look at her, she's so cute. I think for the first time I nailed this wig. Whoops. So I decided she will be using a very basic and simple cute spring dress. Honestly this dress is so simple that I didn't feel like it was necessary to record all the process, come on, it's just a little basic cute tiny dress. Once done, I decided to add some more details, like the straps and the buttons in the front. The hat, I got it from my craft store. I was going to make a hat, but I saw this one on the Rags doll creation section, and it was just too perfect for her. I decided to make it prettier using flowers, leaf and a ribbon, just to keep that warm spring vibe. 
For the shoes, I use just regular polymer clay to sculpt some cute tiny little flats. Once baked, I will just sand them down to make them smooth and seamless. They look really cute, and once they're done, I will just paint them and finish them with a gloss layer. And now we are done! Okay, so she needs a name. What about Koki? I think it fits her and is really cute. Remember, you can download the files of this doll to 3D print on my Thingiverse profile. Link is down below. Custom eyes and doll stand are also included. Okay guys, if you're still here, you're awesome. Like this video if you like it, remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, hope you stick around cause I have a lot of doll projects coming up. See you in my next video, bye!